we're back, week 26. That means we have consistently been able to do an episode a week for six months. What an achievement. Anyway, um, it has been a crazy week. Uh, actually, it's been a crazy couple. We had uh, Khabib retire last week. We had uh, Anderson Silva retire this week. Now there's talks of Khabib coming back. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit to talk about. Um, but before we get started, uh, I just got to remind everyone, please subscribe, share, like, comment, all that good stuff. And let's get on with it. Um, today, I am joined by one of our homegrown fighters. Um, he took a short notice fight for his USC debut. I think before that, he was 8-0 and zero here on the uh, national circuit. Um, obviously, he jumped up a weight class and then... Pulled a draw in his last bout, which was, funnily enough, on Fight Island. Um, yeah, let, let, let's have a chat to him. Uh, he goes by the name of Josh Kulabel, and he's sitting right next to me. How have you been? How has 2020 been treating you? And what have you got planned for the rest of the year? Hey, Dennis. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, 2020 has been a... A whirlwind and uh yeah it's just been a it's been full on a lot of ups and downs um but yeah so far so good but you have to say that there was more i i guess ups than there was downs right like um you know i mean you you finally broke into the ufc now um what what was the actual surrounding about that because it was a last minute fight right yeah for sure um Look, yeah, it, it, it was good that I, I finally got my, my foot into the door and uh, I got into the UFC, but also having your, your first professional loss on the world's biggest stage, you know, it's sort of, it's like a double-edged sword. Yes, I, I got into the UFC, but also, um, you know, being in, a little bit embarrassed by the, the way the fight went and, and just, you know, yeah, just the, the, way, the way the fight went completely, so... Uh, Yes, it's good being in the UFC, but also losing in front of you know a full full packed out stadium also is a bit embarrassing and and sucks. You know your first loss. And and speaking of that, like full packed stadium, like how was it? Uh, I mean, obviously you you've been on the national circuit. Like, did you like walking in, or is it just now reflecting on it that you realise like the difference? Or as you were making that walk to the cage, could you feel like could you sense? A difference between say fighting i guess for like urban fight nights or or you know um i don't i don't know uh who else yeah super fight or yeah super uh, fight Darwin. like yeah um yeah for sure like the, the obviously the the size of the crowd made a big difference um but more so like it, it's it's something that you've always dreamed of you know when you first started doing when i first started doing mma i, I always dreamt of doing being in the UFC and uh, to finally be doing it and it's sort of just, uh, yeah, it's just sort of like all hit you at once when you're walking out and you could have all these these people screaming and, and the, the camera is on you, the lights are on you, your music's playing and it's just sort of like, it's surreal. Like you've, you've pictured yourself do this walk, you know, so many times and then for it to finally be happening, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's kind of mind boggling. And was it was it the way you pitched it? Um, it was actually a, a lot less than what I imagined. I thought it would have been a lot, a lot bigger. Maybe because I, I have pictured it in my mind so many times that it just became like just like a, another walkout. But um, it was obviously a lot different than you know fighting in a in a basketball court or fighting in like a you know a little PCYC hole or something like that. It's it's obviously different. And what about backstage warming up? Was there a different energy? Um, to be honest, no, not really. Like, uh, it was, uh, the same, you know, I still had m my coach, I still had my brother hitting pads with me, um, warming up, uh, there, there wasn't too much, much difference, but, um, you know, like obviously warming up and seeing all these other UFC fighters next to you warming up as well. It was, it was kind of surreal, but, uh, it, at the end of the day, it was, you know, this, the same as usual business is business. And so what, what was the, um, I guess, what was uh, all the conditions around that first fight? I mean, obviously it was late notice. Um, who, do you know who you replaced? 
I uh, actually replaced a good friend of mine in uh, Jamie Malarkey. He uh, he um, had an injury. Um, I think this was when he did his back and uh, he needed surgery. And um, before he pulled out, he actually uh, messaged me and told me, Josh, just giving you a heads up. I know you, you uh, want to get into UFC. And uh, yeah, yeah, I reckon you should put your name out there and, and get your first hand in and uh, sort of, you know, jump at it. And so, yeah, I just... I took him on his advice and exactly that. So it finally happened. Nice. Now, you guys have known each other for a while and, and I say that because I've seen, I don't know if you posted or he posted of you guys like, I don't know, as school kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, uh, yeah, we've known each other for now like um, eight or nine years now. We uh, we actually uh, fought in um, Rockdale uh, PCYC Club for Pancration, which people don't know Pancrations is like basically – the first beginning of uh, real MMA. It's the, you know, the start of MMA. Um, but the rules were basically amateur MMA that we know today, where it's striking on the feet, obviously no elbows and no knees. Um, but when we hit the ground, again, you're allowed to strike, but no head strikes. And uh, for submissions, you're not allowed to do any rotational leg locks um, or anything that's going to, like knee bars or something like that. Um, so it's basically... Amateur MMA, what we know today. Okay, and and so have you guys ever done full camps together? Or because I know he's obviously out at Central Coast, you're with Eagle. Yep. But I know sometimes. I mean, it's the same as you know uh, Arlene on her last fight. She was down at freestyles a lot and stuff. So I'm, I'm I'm sure you guys do mix it up with one another. We we do. Um, we always we always uh, keep in contact. So like whenever he needs like some good solid hard rounds. You know, I'll come to him or when I'm in camp and I, I need solid hard rounds, he comes to me. So it's always been a give and take. And, um, yeah, he's always, he's always you know, been there for me whenever I needed you know, needed the, the training. So, yeah, we've always been helping each other. But we've never fully had to, like, obviously train every day with each other. But we've always, you know, been in contact, you know, every couple of weeks or, you know, and it's 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 been good being able to see, like, it's been a good comp- competitive level between us two because, Obviously, when we're training with each other, one week, okay, yeah, you got the better of me, and then next couple of weeks, I want to see how much we've involved, uh, and then try to, you know, see again who leveled up again. So it's it's always been good that in in that sense. But theoretically, you guys would never actually um, have to fight each other, right? Because you were saying for for that first fight, you actually had to move up a weight class. So you guys are in different weight classes, correct? Yes, correct. Um, it, the funny thing is when we were, we were growing up, uh, when we were fighting on the pancreation scene um, or the amateur MMA scene, uh, we, we always had that dream of fighting in the UFC. And I still remember we used to say to each other, the only time we would fight each other is if we were to, uh, if we, if it was a shot to get into the UFC. So we always made that like sort of gentleman's agreement of like, oh yeah, we'll fight each other if the time came to it. But, you know, thank God it never did. And I guess that's what he tried to do, obviously, when he fought Alex, right? He he took that one fight and fought Alex. Obviously, Alex beat him in that one. But I think he that was his intention there as well, hoping that if if he would win that fight, obviously, that would have been his ticket. That's um, it. But it's crazy. Like, it seems all three of you guys have made it now, right? which, <laughs> yeah. is, which is always good. But, uh, I mean... Considering, I'm, I'm not going to say that he's the only reason why why you're in the UFC. Obviously, you know, you, you've proved your worth uh, in the last two fights. I mean, the first one didn't go your way. Uh, the second one I thought should have gone your way, me personally. But um, obviously, I won't say it didn't go your way because it ended in a draw, yep. uh, which which never happens, which yeah. is the crazy thing, right? Yeah. Like, I was like, damn. But um, have you bought him a beer? <laughs> um, no, not this time around. Um, it well, uh, after the fight, it, it's it, it still seemed like there was a little bit of a uh, tension between me and him. Um, no, 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 no. I'm talking about Jamie. I'm talking about because Jamie kind of gave you that that open door for you to go in in, in Auckland, right? Because oh, yeah, he yeah. was like, "Hey, yeah, heads yeah. up, blah blah blah." So I'm saying, oh. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, J- Jamie for sure. Yeah, yeah. I bought him plenty of beers. Actually, I think he owes me a couple now. <laughs> um, but yeah, J- J- Jamie's the man. I appreciate him. Yeah, for, for all the things he's done for me. But now, what were you about to say about about this last fight? Oh, so. about Jordan. Um, yeah, like usually I'm, I'm pretty sweet with all the people that I fight. I know that, you know, I've always got a respect, mutual respect for somebody that I share the cage with. 
Um, but this time around, we we uh yeah had some. There was definitely still some tension after the fight. I I believe he's sort of putting on a a front with um with him thinking that he won that fight. I think he knows deep down, and his coaches know deep down that he he lost that fight. So uh, he can take it however he wants to take it. But you know, I know, and his coaches know that he he lost that fight. Yeah, I mean, for me, the the weird thing is, right? Like this, the way I judged it was, you clearly took round one. That's the way I saw it. Round two, that one, that one was probably the closest one, right? Yeah. It could have gone either way. I edged it towards you. Yep, that was me personally. Round three, I'll say he 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 won 100%. that. That that that's just the way I had it. Yep. Um, but the funny thing is, you look at the scorecards. Two out of the three judges had it the same way. Yeah. Right. Um. Obviously, the blue corner, right? Yeah. <laughs> t- t- it took it two to uh, two to one. Yeah. Uh. I think it was the white had it two to one as well, but they gave a ten eight on the last round. Yep. And then the yellow, I don't. That's the one that boggles me. Like as I said, like I'm I'm not actually uh too offended by the draw. Yep. Because as I say, it could have been you one, him three. Yep. And the two was that close that yeah. you could potentially say draw. So, yeah. I mean, the result itself, I kind of feel like I'm not too offended by that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I, as I said, I personally had you winning, but I'm okay with the draw. But when the, when that other judge gave it three to 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 him, I yeah. was like, like I clearly from that knockdown in the first when it, when he went from that uh, spinning back fist and you just like <laughs> boom, you yeah. you clocked him one and 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 put him. Literally put him put him on his butt. Like yeah. I was like, after that there, there was no discussion on who won that round, yeah. right? Like, um, but I mean, how how did you see that fight? Um, in in total, I I think like exactly the way you thought. I, I thought I, I obviously took round one. Um, even if it wasn't a ten eight round, I was I knew I, I still took that round. Um, in round two, I I was uh leading the 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 strikes in in the in the stand up throughout the whole the whole round until um until he like sort of kicked and, and kicked my base out and I ended up having to shoot and he ended up in the turtle position but in that turtle position he really didn't do much so majority of the round like 4 minutes and 10 seconds or 4 minutes and 20 seconds of that 5 minute round I was leading the dance and then that last 40 seconds the judge is going to obviously see the last 40 seconds of him just being on top of me not doing much with it, but the last thing they see of that round is him on top of me. So they probably could have seen that and been like, oh, yep, that's why uh, they probably might have gave him the round. But obviously round three, he, he had a good few submission attempts, um, pretty uh, one pretty tight triangle attempt. And, uh, yeah, so it obviously was like lent towards him in that third round for sure. Now, listen, with the third round, was it a case of that – like why 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 do you think he came so strong? Was it something that he did? Was it something like were you tiring in that third round, um, or was it a fact that you thought you had the first two and you were trying to just stay safe, not try anything too crazy, and and kind of like ride out the win? Like why why was it? Because as I said, I, I kind of feel like it went clearly from in your favor to obviously the the, the third one. As I say, I'll, I'll I'll be honest with that. I. I gave it to him. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, it, I think it was a, it was a, a mixture of all three, a mixture of a lot of that stuff. Um, I believe I, I took rounds one and two, so I just needed to survive that third round. I was tiring in that third round. I think I, um, I sort of, uh, you know, blew my wad with the whole adrenaline. I was sort of like really nervous for this for this fight. I felt like this fight was my UFC debut, and um, yeah, so I I wanted to put on a good performance, and I I knew how. how Big of a name Jordan is, you know he's he's fought good guys, only good guys in the UFC, and um, you know he's he knocked out um, uh, Duhoi Choi, and then he took uh, Andre Feely, who fought on the weekend um, to a to a split decision. So I knew how dangerous he was. He was also a, a two time two division champ in uh, Canada in one of their biggest promotions. So I I knew he was a he was a guy that was very dangerous. So. I was nervous, and I think the adrenaline dump sort of got to me. The nerves got to me, and the, by the by the time the second round came, I was sort of, you know, spent. So I think, yeah, it was a mixture of it was a mixture of all of those. Now, fight week. <clears throat> did you know that you were the biggest underdog of that card? Like, did were you aware of that? 
Uh, yeah, I, I was I was aware of that. Yeah. I got I got a lot of friends um, telling me that they're putting bets on and that uh, that I was the biggest um, underdog. But also a couple of the the commentators when I was doing a few interviews did bring that up. Um, but yeah, it the the uh, odd odd makers, you know, the bet, the guys that put out the odds. Uh, yeah, I think they lost some money on that one. Well, I thought it was crazy. It was like uh, I know at one point it was like four dollars sixty. Right, and I was like, "This is this is just insane, right?" Um, <laughs> but like, d- like heading into fight week, like, does that play on you? Like, do you do you, do you sometimes like look at stuff like that and go, "These guys are counting me out," or or does it uh, does it make you rethink about your opponent? Like, is there something that they're seeing that I'm not seeing, or like when when you kind of like head into fight week with, as I say, those kind of odds against you? Like, does that play on you at all? Um. A little bit, but you know, it's it's usually the general public that don't know much about the fight. Like they, they, you're not my training partners. You you don't know what I'm doing in the gym. You know, you you're not the one that has stepped inside the cage. So um, a lot of those guys, they don't know what they're talking about. So they they can they they obviously they they obviously based it off um, my last performance in the UFC, and obviously I had a shit performance against uh, Jalen Turner and ended up getting stopped in that fight. And uh, yeah, so they, they obviously would have seen that and then they obviously would have, you know, seen Jordan fighting a highly, you know, highly experienced and highly talented fighter in Andre Feely and, and you know, taking him to a split decision. And then b- before that, um, knocking out another, you know, rising prospect in Duhoi Choi, who was also a, a killer and, and knocked him out. So he's, um, they would have obviously put two and two together. A guy that lost his UFC debut, Look like shit against a guy that just fought two two highly prospect uh, like two highly experienced highly you know up there you know with the top level fighters and and, and took it to him so they would have thought yeah okay uh, Josh is gonna get uh, starched this fight so I don't blame him. And in regards to obviously fighting on the UFC, they always they always talk about there's levels to this game, right? Um, did did you find that there is a massive jump in say? what you've faced here on the national circuit compared to now your your two stints in the UFC? Do, do you feel like there is a, 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 a massive jump or is it just a jump? Or, yeah, in your in your opinion, like, how do you feel that level between, say, you know, the national and, and the UFC? Um, yeah, for sure. There's, a, there's definitely a, a massive jump. This was actually my first real camp where I was able to not not work and just train full time. And even then, it was still a very uh, competitive fight where I used to be able to work full-time, work 40, 40 plus hour weeks and then train on top of that and then fight and, you know, still be able to, you know, relatively coast through some of these fights on the local scene. Um, but when you're fighting at the highest level, these guys, this, this is all they do. All they do is train day in, day, in, day out. So, um, yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a massive jump in just the terms of, how much training that needs to be done, and on top of that, obviously your opponent's doing the exact same thing. So there is, um, yeah, there's a definitely a massive jump in 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 between fighting on the local scene and fighting on the international level. And in regards to your training, um, has much changed now that it's become your full time gig? And and what I mean by that is, are you doing more training, or is it the fact that you've now got more time for your body to recover? Because I like and I guess what you because obviously before you were working forty hours a week and you were training, um, now you're not working. Are you filling those forty hours, or is or is it more like yes, you're still doing the same sessions, but yeah, as I say, you have more re- recovery time in between. Um, it's 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 both. It's um um being able to fit more training sessions in, um, and also you know being more um mindful of of recovery, so much like sleep and nutrition. You know, a lot of things that I've I've neglected in the past, especially on the on the local on the local scene, has been my nutrition and my recovery. All I used to think, you know, is the harder you train, the harder you suffer in the gym, the better I'm gonna get. Which is obviously a, a lot of fighters' mentality. They they have that mentality of, oh, I suffered this much and this much in the gym and blah blah blah. That I deserve to win this. It's it's not the case. You know, it's um it's about training smart, training hard and training smart. So it's a a lot of things has changed as much as, you know, my nutrition, being able to do strength and conditioning properly now. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, 
more time in the gym to be able to game plan and, and you know, upskill in, in some certain areas where I might have been lacking. So when you talk about nutrition, <clears throat> I, I've seen you post in quarantine that you um, – <laughs> <laughs> Dig into the good old KFC. <laughs> so if that's your nutrition now, what was it before? Uh, um, it, that was my nutrition. <laughs> that was my nutrition. Um, I mean, that's what they call the Mark Hunt diet, right? <laughs> he he loves the KFC too. Yeah, that's. I'm trying to get on that. I'm trying to get on that diet. I'm trying to. I'm trying to hit as hard as Mark Hunt. So uh, and Bam Bam. So uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to hit like those heavyweights. Now, nah, but uh, on on a serious note, yeah, like. Um, I, I used to just, you know, uh, just like read up these these quick fix diets, like cutting out carbs and, and doing all these sort of going keto. and But, you know, it, it, I did it through my own experiences and I sort of like now I've done done and tried it, I know that that's not the way to go about it. And now I have like a, a dietitian. Um, everybody knows the fight dietitian, Jordy Sullivan. Um, shout out. But, um, yeah, he's been he's been looking after me. Um, and now, yeah, I'm just a full-time professional athlete and I have to take this serious. I can't just be, you know, blowing out, you know, 20 kilos overweight. And then, you know, when fight camp starts trying to cut 20 kilos and trying to upskill and game plan and the rest of it. So just try, trying to be a full-time professional is, yeah, just you know, being on top of things. But having said that, do you have like a cheat day? Like, obviously, we're talking about the KFC, that was after the fight now, <laughs> you're stuck in quarantine. Yeah. I'm sure the quarantine meals weren't that good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, do, do you treat yourself to those? Because I know that there's some athletes that they'll, they'll train hard, they'll eat right, they'll have their fight, and then afterwards, obviously, whether it's – the, the drinking, whether it's whatever, they, they kind of let themselves go a little, which, I mean, you kind of deserve it, right? You, you've put your body through so much for for three months, four months that you kind of do. But then there's other athletes um, that have said to me, like, no, why would I put in all that hard work for four months to then, after the fact, let it all go again just to do it, – it's, it's better to stay consistent right throughout, right? So what's your kind of plan and attack there? Like, obviously, that was the one meal that you put on, put on <laughs> Instagram for the world to see. But, like, do you have your cheat days? Or, like, or even with the fight dietitian, does he allow, like, a day off? Or is it pretty strict all year round? The, the thing with the, the fight dietitian is that it feels, he, the, way he, he, um, the way he's planned things out, it feels like you're, you're cheating because how much he gets you eating throughout camp. So it feels like you're like... I'm, I, I'm talking about the naughty stuff. Though. Yeah. I'm not talking about how much you eat. I'm talking yeah, yeah. about like chocolates, pizza, I don't know, KFC. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, look, I'm only human. <laughs> I'm only human. And, and people that don't know me before, um, before I started fighting, I was actually uh, a 15-year-old, 98-kilo 90, kid. So I was always a... F I'm still a fat kid at heart. Um, I obviously... I'm human. I, I, you know, I love having a beer. I love, you know, chocolate. I love, you know eating chips while I'm watching a movie. I'm, I'm only human, but, you know, it's, there's obviously a time and place to do that. And, yeah, like, yeah, I, I think it, for, um, for a lot of people that, that just do it strict all year round, I feel like they're just going to burn themselves out. I know personally if I tried to do that, and I have tried to do that, is that, yeah, I'm going to be strict. And even after the fight, blah, 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 I've said it to myself so many times that I'm going to be strict. Yeah, and then I after the fight happens and I try to be strict for one or two weeks, I, I sort of burn myself out and – then I end up binging out and, you know, blowing out even more, more, more so. So I think having that little mental release, knowing that, oh, yeah, Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday, I'll be good. Sunday, I've planned this, this and this. So I think it, it's a good, um, a good release. I think, you know, um, what's, the, what's that saying that, you know, all work, no play makes uh, Jack a dull boy? I think that's the very similar well, to it. And I totally agree, right? Like, because I've said, like, you know, there's this, as you say, there's keto, there's the carb, there's the paleo, there's yeah. there, there, there's so many diets, and and don't get me wrong, I think all of them work, right? Mm -hmm. The problem I have with all of them is that it's hard to stick at it consistently, right? Because I kind of feel like when you're pulling, it doesn't matter what part of the diet out, whether it's carbs, whether it's you yeah, know, as yeah. I say, a bit a bit of sugar, whether it's this that, it's just hard. 
A, because you always feel like you're looking over your back. Like even when you go out with friends, right, and as you say, have a beer and then you're then like, oh, start calorie counting. And, yeah. You know, like yeah, and, and, it, sure. and it just becomes so hard. And I think that, that is the problem because people do so well on these diets and then they have a, a birthday or a wedding or something they go to. They, they let go for that one day and then it's just a train wreck, right? Yeah. Like they just fall back into bad habits where – I feel that if you have a general good diet with the optional day that you can kind of you, – that train wreck never starts because yeah. you're just like, okay, well, my one day I'm going to use on the wedding or yep. my one day I'm going to use on the birthday, yep. right? Like, yep, for sure. And I think that is the problem with most diets. Like I've always said, look, because people always say, oh, what, what's the best diet? What's the best diet? And I'm like, they all work. It's whether you can stick to them or not. Yeah, it's about. I, th- I think it's about you know having that balance. It's about having that balance. You don't have that balance, and you just you know always strict. You you're gonna burn yourself out mentally. Nice. Well, let's go back to your last fight. Uh, another uh, another moment for me in that fight, which I which which I found was really funny, was the eye poke. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh. And the only reason is it's the first time that I've actually seen the ref. Call it because you know sometimes you're like fighters and they're like I poke and he's like nah continue yeah uh, where in this case it was a case of that he actually called the eye poke and you were like nah I poked myself in the eye continue <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> how, how did that even work um, I, I honestly don't know I, I I think I I went to step in and I think our forearms clashed and I, I um my fore, my my knuckle ended up hitting myself in the eye or my thumb ended up hitting myself in the eye and I was sort of like. Wait, was that me that did that or was that him that did that? So I saw, was sort of like, okay, well, my vision's is a little bit blurry. And then Jason Herzog obviously stepped in and was like, you're good. We, you have time. You can have a, you, you know, you got five minutes. And then I said, no, 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 I'm good. Um, I, th- I think I just poked myself in the eyes. I was just, you know, just saying what was on top of my mind. I didn't know that, I didn't know that um, Jason Herzog was going to be mic'd up and that everybody in the whole world was going to be able to hear me say that, oh, I just poked myself <laughs> poke myself in the eye so uh, yeah but on th- on that note like the other flip side of that i was like how honest was that right <laughs> i was like this guy's honest and that's why it disappointed me in the third round right when uh jordan kicked you right and you were like hey listen that was a low blow and he was like no nah, continue and i was like hey listen he just literally was the most honest fighter i've ever seen by claiming his own eye poke, how can you not give it to him? Like, just give it to him, right? Like, but on that, was was it a low blow? Yeah. Um. For, it, if you if you watch the fight back, he, he usually in in the in that standing up and laying down position, most people do like a roundhouse kick to kick to the legs, and he literally just did like a straight front snap kick in. Uh, I don't know if I can say, it, but like in the in the gooch area. You know, <laughs> in between the 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 you know the male part and the your know, your bum, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he ended up front snap kicking me right there, and uh, I thought it would have been clear as day because it was literally a front snap kick. A front snap kick looks completely different to a roundhouse kick when you're trying to kick somebody in the leg. So I didn't know what he was trying to aim for anyway with that front snap kick. Maybe he he was trying to kick the back of my leg with with that front snap kick, but yeah, I, I didn't know what he was aiming for. See, so if I was the ref, as I said, I would have gone like, "This guy is honest. If he says it was a, if he, if he says it was a groin shot, I'm gonna give it to him." That's that. That was me. But uh, um, but I mean, the last the last thing on 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 your um uh, fight uh, as well is you you kind of took it like a loss, which I found really intriguing as well, right? Because when they lifted both of your arms, um, you know. He stood there and he kind of took it. You were ready to walk out, uh, walk out of that cage. Um, and as I say, like I, I found that intriguing because, you know, I I was like, hang on a sec, you didn't lose. And and as I said, like once again, I I gave I gave it to you, but I'm happy with the draw because I was like, listen, it was close, mm-hmm. like one apiece, and that middle round could have gone either way. Um, what was your mindset there? Like, do you, do you consider it a loss when it's a draw, or like, why why was your reaction? I guess the uh, way it was. My reaction was the way it was because I thought I did enough to to get the job done. And then when you know when you hear it go that way, it's sort of uh, 
it's like a slap in the face because of all the hard work and all, all the people that they've invested their time and energy into me just sort of like I didn't get to show it you know I didn't get I didn't get the outcome that I was wanted for everybody as well it's not just myself I wanted the outcome for everybody as well and then on top of that obviously if a draw the, the another thing that played onto my mind as soon as it, it, it was called was that um, I'm only going to get half my money I'm only going to get paid half of what I thought I deserve I should have should have won you know so uh uh, already those those are two two big slaps in the face um and then on top of that like uh my mindset is also with the draw what does that what does that do for both me or Jordan? it's sort of like um it's like sort of you might as well should have just stayed in that cage and you give us one more round and we'll show i was each just other. about to say i wish they could somehow do that that you know? a draws don't happen that often but i kind of wish that if it is a draw that they can just go okay you know, we got one extra round. Yeah, Let's go. Sure. Like yeah. I, I, I kind of wish that they really could do that. But I mean, it is. I mean, the one thing I, I, I will stand by is, is the whole pay structure. It is tough. Yeah. Right. Like when, when literally it's half your purse. Half your purse. Yeah. Right. So um, but I mean, how confident that were you that you still did enough? Because I'm pretty sure they read out the thirty twenty seven for him first. Yeah. So when you heard that come through, how how confident were you that you still had done enough? Um, I just thought maybe that judge was probably drinking. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> um, but I, the, I, I thought I, I thought I still thought as soon as they they announced the second judge and they they got that one right, the twenty nine twenty eight. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. Then maybe this next judge is gonna do the exact same thing. But uh, the, I don't know what it was with the ten eight on on the last round. But um, if you're gonna if you're gonna give Jordan the ten eight in that last round, you might as well give me the ten eight in that first round. So um, yeah, like. Uh, yeah, it was just a, a a little bit just frustrating, you know. You 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 obviously in your mind you just think, yes, I've done enough. I did I did what I had to do, and I got the job done, and I'm gonna walk away out of here with a win and move forward onto the next next guy, you know. But now, like I was saying before, what does a what does a draw do for both me or Jordan? Maybe it might set us up later on in the future when we both you know get a couple of wins and we end up getting ranked high, and you know it could be like a a rival fight. All oh, these two young kids, there were fighting each other when they were young, they had a draw. And then when we ended up getting more experience, fight each other when we were more ranked, like h higher. Um, but if the UFC came, say, and said, look, we want to just run that one straight back, would you would you be open to that idea? Or are you kind of like, no. you, you want to put that one away now? No, no, no. Put, yeah, put that one away. Uh, I want to fight somebody else. Um, he, like I said to you before, I think, like, he's going to try to say and put on a front to say that it, it, he, just, he thought he won that fight. But... Um, we're just gonna, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll I think we'll, we'll definitely fight down later on down the track. But um, right now I don't want to be fighting the same guy twice back to back. Nice, and being that it was on Fight Island, like obviously the setting's totally different, right? Um, was there any opportunity for you to run into those officials and and not like run into them to start, but like I, 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 I like whether it be at the hotel lobby or whatever, could you ask one of uh, like especially the guy that gave thirty twenty seven the other way? Like, is there ever moments like that where you can like go, what were you looking at, like? Um, not 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 as in as I said I I I never would think that you'd start trouble with these guys but like just like just out of curiosity to go hey just for my own sake so I know what I did wrong why did you give x y and z do you, do you get those opportunities or uh, not really no not really like to be honest when I'm in the cage I don't even really know where the judges are sitting or who who are the exact judges or you know so to everyone to me when I'm in the cage everyone just looks like a, an official everyone looks like a commentator everyone looks like a cameraman so it's sort of like I, oh, you're you're that judge, or you're that judge, and you're that judge. So I don't really, I really, the names, I can't put the names to the face anyway. So it's not like it's a, a big deal for me. So I never really thought of it anyway. Like me going up to ask them wasn't in in my mind. But yeah, it wasn't really on, on my mind to try and you know go up to them and, and sort of like uh, even be curious and be able to ask these guys these questions. And so, what happened to your third cornerman because you had your two right yep and i know you got sent with your third right yeah about yay big <laughs> i <laughs> i thought she was gonna make an appearance i honestly thought like could you imagine like you look through the cage and you've just got <laughs> <the> <laughs> you got this big head like i am um, what like 
Could you make that happen or, or was it something that you, you think they just wouldn't have allowed considering you probably didn't have a face, <laughs> a fa- face mask big enough for her? <laughs> um, the, the, the thing about that pillow is, uh, so, so my girlfriend, Sarah, she, um, she, she couldn't make it because of obviously due to work and obviously coming back and having to do two weeks. So she means she would have had to miss out on a month's worth of work and um, she couldn't do that. So uh, yeah, she ended up making me a pillow to bring <laughs> and um, yeah, like we were actually, I was actually talking to her before, before the fight, I was saying, oh, what do you reckon if I do um, bring that pillow, pill- pillow down, I walk out with that pillow as well. And she goes, no, I feel like it'll just be a big distraction. And I go, it'd be good. It'd be like an actual uh, third corner man that <laughs> in, in my corner. And I, I asked um, my other corner man, Max, if he would do it. And he goes, yeah, I'd do it. But uh, you don't think it would uh, throw you off a little bit? I go, yeah, yeah it, it might actually throw me off a little bit. But uh, yeah, we were planning on doing that. You know, you did that, it probably would have gone viral. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> straight up, like when I saw that pillow and especially the way you did it, you're like, I was meant to get this little pillow and then like, it's like this yeah. big, right? <laughs> My whole luggage. <laughs> right, your whole luggage, it's kind of crazy. But like the whole Fight Island experience, how was that for you? Like, obviously, <clears throat> I, as I've said in the past to, to some of these people is, it kind of feels like a sci-fi movie, um, like from an outsider looking in. Um, but yeah, how, how was, I mean, how was Abu Dhabi? How- uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's a, it's a crazy experience. Like, honestly, I, I felt like, uh, I felt like a prince there. Like, uh, anything I asked for, um, they did, you know, I, I like the, the, there was like a five star hotel. Uh, ev- the, the services there was, was crazy that their actual motto. I've told this to a few people is that their actual motto is, like we tried to call up and the first thing that they say is like, oh, hi, it's blah, blah, blah. Um, what can we help you with? Whatever, whenever. That is their motto, whatever, whenever. So like literally you could call up at one thirty in the morning and ask for, oh, could you please bring these mats down to this room? And they li- would literally do it within you know, five to 10 minutes. Like it's, it, they literally do everything they can to to have your stay as comfortable as possible. So. And what was your room like? Because, I mean, obviously, Dana White's given us a tour of his room, right? And he's got a pool with a swan and yeah. and, <laughs> and he's got a candy bar. Yeah. And, like, I assume your room wasn't as big. Yeah. I, I probably didn't have a pool. Yeah. Um, but, like, do they give you the whole candy bar and stuff like that? And the only reason I ask is, like, how tempting is that, I guess? Or would it – I mean, depends. If they didn't give it to you, then it's not tempting. But my reasoning is, I guess – you know, like, have, do they give you all these treats and you're sitting there all week going, but I'm coming away. Nah, the, 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 the only thing they did um, do for us, though, was um, they gave me, like, a, a introduction cake to say, welcome to Fight Island. And obviously that cake is just full of chocolate and I couldn't have <laughs> any of it. So I just let my um, my coach and my teammate end up eating it all straight away. So it was out of my way, so I, I didn't have to think about it. <laughs> And and did they let you know how good it was? Oh yeah, for sure. You should have seen all the food that they were ordering while I was uh, while I was cutting away and eating close to nothing all day. And how was the um, the COVID tests? Oh, and the only reason I ask is like obviously it's become the twenty twenty flex to to have the COVID <laughs> test, right? Like, it's but not a flex, but. No, I'm just saying because everyone puts it on the gram like this is and and then you see even like Dana White is like I've done this like 17 times now and stuff. It's it's like you know to see how many times you can get tested, I guess. But the funny thing is the when I look at like the um, the Bellator fighters, they're actually testing themselves. Have you seen that? Yeah, I see. I seen um, Janae doing Janae it. Janae yeah, and, and Arlene did it. Yeah, right. I've seen and that, yeah. and it's like they stand next to each other, and they're not. It doesn't look like they're sticking it right up. They're just kind of like swelling around. And I'm like, it looks nice, <laughs> right? And I'm like, hang on. If this, either they're not doing the test correctly, and if they are, why wouldn't you opt to go for that test than having this thing stuck right up? You know. Yeah. The well, the the good thing about um the UFC one is they give you an option of whether you want it like nasal or oral. So it was good that I was able to you know at least one day you're like oh my nose is a bit stuffy I don't want them sticking that thing up my nose so I do it down the back of the throat. So, but I, I think in total we ended up doing like nine tests in total. So it's been full in on. in how many days? Well, we 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 did two or three before we left and then we did another two when we were on fight island and then we did another two or three in the hotel quarantine so 
So in regards to you as well, when you say we left, did you go directly from here to Fight Island, or no? You had to go to Vegas first. No, no, I went. We went straight to we went straight to Fight Island. Okay. Yeah. So like we we ended up doing a test um, three days out, and we ended up getting the results three days out, and um, they said that it wasn't valid because it had to be a test within forty eight hours of leaving. So we again we had to do another test. Obviously came back negative, and then we were finally able to leave the country due to due to that test. And how was the rest of the trip? Because obviously I've seen you have a bit of time at that that, that pool. Um, looked incredible. Yep. Um, and I'm not sure which one it was, if it was your coach or your, your training partner. One of them definitely had to work on their tan. Did, <laughs> they, did, they both needed to work on their nah, tan. No, one, <laughs> one of them was like, hey, listen, <laughs> like <laughs> either that or put a shirt back on. I don't know. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, how, how was the rest of your experience or, or was it, kind of uh, a little salty because of obviously how that fight went nah. down or did you actually end up nah. having a pretty good time I, over there? I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed, I tried to, you know, it, it was a good experience having them there just to be able to enjoy like even in between training sessions. So we trained like at like four o'clock because we were fighting at that around that time there. We ended up training like four o'clock and then we'd have like the whole day to do nothing before we, st- we did like another training session around 12 o'clock. So um, yeah, it was... Um, yeah, just in it, we we tried to do the most throughout the day. So like we'd go to the gaming room, we'd play some PlayStation, we'd play some pool, we'd do some ping pong. You know, we'd travel around, jump on the bikes, play some basketball. We'd literally just be trying to kill time while we were over there. So, in in all, it, it was obviously a, a, a great experience. Like did was, you did you go on the racetrack? No, I didn't end up going on the and, racetrack. And yeah. did they have? the cars racing at odd hours of the night because i know one of the fight islands they had uh alex which is one of the video guys there and yep. it's like 3 a.m in the morning they have these yeah. cars racing through and he's like dude yeah. yeah so same thing the same thing they had just at random at random times they'd have these cars just like running the track so yeah was- and, and and how is that like you're trying to prepare for a fight and you've got these cars zooming around at 3 a.m in the morning oh literally you, you the, the 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 doors that separate you from outside is like like so thick and you won't be able to hear anything. Uh, so okay, see, because by his, by his Instagram story, I was kind of feeling like, because he was kind of like this at 3 a.m. in the morning and I was kind of feeling like he was being woken up woken up yeah. by these race cars like flying through, no, you know? No, it's a, it's a thick glass in between them and, and inside, so. Okay, okay. So what was the toughest thing about that experience? Was it the, the week leading up to... Uh, which includes, I guess, the the COVID testing, the travel. Um, was it the fight, or the, was it the two week quarantine once you returned? Uh, for sure, it was the the two week quarantine after. Like, um, you're you're on the highest highs uh, after a fight. You, it, regardless of the result, you know, especially if you, you have such a good fight, you know, and people are talking about the fight. You're you're on a high. You're like, yes, I just had a good fight. You know, people are talking about the fight. Yes, it's good. You know, my my stock's rising. Um, but then to sort of be on a high and then all of a sudden come back straight to Australia and, you know, be escorted in a bus, straight into a bus, right off the plane, and then straight to a hotel, you, you know, it's sort of like, okay, and then you just literally just throw you in and keep you in there for two weeks. It's sort of, a, it's sort of you know, a, sort of depressing, you know, because when you finally do get out of the two weeks quarantine, not everybody's asking you, oh, how was the fight? Everybody asking you, how was how was the quarantine? So it sort of like, you know, dampens it a little bit. So that and and with the quarantine, was it one room for the three of you? Because I know obviously all the all the training that you guys were doing, you're all in the same room. Or did they give you separate rooms, or did they at least give you like a a two bedroom kind of scenario? No, no. Nope. It was literally us three in that that small little room there with two two double beds. So, I mean, I know you're good with your team, but after the two weeks. Was there a moment where you're like, all right, now I need a two week quarantine from <laughs> from either one of you? Just like, were, like, was there a snorer in the group? Like, yeah, what? we all know who the snorer was. My, my coach. That's why. That's why I didn't. Neither one of us wanted to sleep next to coach because he literally snores and will shake the bed. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the the good thing about the the whole two weeks quarantine is that we actually, you know, we're, we're very alike in in a lot of things. Not just our love for fighting, but we're alike you know, in a lot of, a lot of aspects of life. And, um, yeah, I think we just got along even more and I think we just got, you know, a lot more closer and, you know, a little, a little bit more intimate together. And like we, we've, sh- we've shared something like that now. So it's, uh, 
it's a cool experience you can look back in life and, and be like you know that's that's something we shared and how strict is the quarantine like have they got because obviously we've heard what happened down in melbourne right and that was like a total you know yep. mess up but like up here like have they got guards on every floor yep. or like because even like going back to the kfc like is there a process to get in that KFC to you? Like, or is, is there like an outside, say an Uber Eats driver that comes up and delivers it? Like how? It it's literally the, the staff. So um, the Uber Eats, and you are, we were only allowed to get delivered one Uber Eats delivery a day for us. So we made it count. Um, but yeah, there literally is just the staff getting given the, whatever it was giving, given and ju they just bring it up to the hotel room. But yeah, there was a security guard on every floor so that nobody would just leave. So it was a uh, it was a bit full on, um, but again, like being stuck in a room, a room for two weeks, uh, you don't you can't blame them for wanting to just get up and leave, you know. And what were the rooms like? Were they at least a decent size or? Because I know, I know when you look, for instance, Arlene's doing hers right now, and she's she, got, yeah. she she's got like Darling Harbour as the view and stuff. And like it's yeah, and she's and she's got like a nice open space. I don't, I honestly don't know why I ended up getting a room like that, where it was literally just one room with two double beds in it. But it is what it is. It's done now. I mean, granted, she fought for the title, right? But so yeah, I, yeah. But also, also like uh, I've seen uh, Jimmy Crutes, I've seen Jamie Malarkey's, I've seen Rob Whitaker's and Bam Bam's. I've seen all their rooms, and all their rooms look, you know, ten times fold better than mine. So, I, I wonder if if there is like if they get to choose or if it's just luck of the draw. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I really do. And and so who picks up the bill on that one? It do the UFC pick up the bill, or you expected out of your half purse now to pick up the bill? Nah. Um. I'll, well, I haven't received any any invoice or, or anything like that. It was just more so, yeah, like if I do receive it, my manager just ended up telling me um, if I do receive an invoice just to send it to him and I think he'll send it to the UFC and the UFC will look after it. So, yeah. Well, you would hope so, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've already had, so. your, you've had your pay cut in half and yeah. then like you've got to pay your coaches yeah. and, and training yeah. partners yeah. and your manager yeah. and and now comes the Australian government and they're like, but, A, they want the tax. Yeah. Uh, let's not get it wrong. Yeah. Like your purse is taxable, yeah. and then they still want their three k or f no, it'd be more because you had three people, so it'd probably be more uh, like five k. But the the thing with the the fight and my purse was that uh, not many people know that um, when I was doing an interview out the back, I was getting interviewed by the UFC. I didn't know I was by the UFC, like the actual UFC media. Usually they have like all these different media outlets trying to interview, and uh, it was actually the UFC um, interviewing me and. Um, Dana White ended up coming up to me right in between my my interview and he just tapped me on the shoulder and gave me a fist bump and he said, um, that was such a good fight. Um, you should keep your head up, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you and Jordan your win money as well as your show money. So that was a, that was a massive... Bam, that that's was a, what you want to... I was just about to say, I was like, you should have just hit him up right there and then gone, hey, listen, Jose Aldo lost his fight, right? But you claimed he won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you gave him a title fight for it. Yeah. Like, uh, I would have straight up played that. But, I mean, look, that's that's where, you know, a lot of a lot of people always give him a lot of grief. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I don't know because I haven't been on that end of it. But, like, there are moments like that where, you know, he's fair. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, um, I mean, what people don't realise is that at the end of the day, they are still trying to run a business. Yep. And the business has to be profitable for them as well. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of cases where instances like that where I feel like, you know, he doesn't need to do that. Yeah. And the fact that he's given it to both of you, that's kind of crazy. I would have yeah. thought he would have picked the winner. Yeah. And he would have said, I thought you won and, and, and given it to one. The fact that he's given it to both of you is, yeah. is, is kind of gnarly. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. That's I, well, yeah. well. What are you talking about? You only got half your purse, huh? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is like that. That's why that was my first initial reaction was because I I thought like oh I'm definitely gonna get paid half of what I got because it's a draw. It's not a win, and yeah, it just sort of like puts a uh, it's it's not a win in 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 the column. You know, it's it's a draw which I never had. Now it's eight. Eight wins, one loss, and one draw now. So well, now all you need is no contest, <laughs> right? So it'll be eight, one, one, and one. <laughs> right? I don't think I've ever seen that. I think they just call the the draws and the no contest as as the one number, right? I've never uh, actually seen four I numbers. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not too sure. On I don't think I've ever seen that either. Yeah. 
So what's next for you? Have they offered you another fight? Have they been in the talks of when you could potentially be making that walk again? Will we see you in 2020? Is it more 2021? What, what, what's going on? Well, um, right after the fight, because I'm, obviously I'm still in the high of a fight, and I'm like, so yes, I'm still you know, buzzing from the fight. I, I, I said to my manager, I want to fight again in December. I want to go again in December. And then he goes, okay, talk to me after the two weeks quarantine. Okay, sweet. So he kept that in mind. And then obviously after the two weeks quarantine happened, I was like, I do not want to go through two more weeks of quarantine unless they change the rules of like um, like house arrest, two weeks house arrest, uh, where I'm at home, you know, at least I, I'm at home where I'm not stuck in a room where I can't open windows, you know. So You know, you know the funny thing about that, right, is that there was a post where they were uh, saying that they want to track people. And I think uh, two of the options was to either wear an ankle bracelet like they do with house arrest or also there was another one where they wanted to create an app where basically the police at any given moment can say, listen, you've got to validate that you're at home and you've got to send a photo within five minutes. And if you don't respond within that five minutes, you can get fined. And obviously if you're out of the house and you take a photo elsewhere, you know, um, and I put that up on my Instagram to say who's down for this. Mm. And it was weird, like, I think it was like 96% of people were like, no. And I was like, how, how does that even make sense? If it means that you're not, I mean, you didn't have to pay the 3K, but I was like, you don't have to pay the 3K. You're at home. It's not like they're going to keep this ankle bracelet on you forever, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's literally for two weeks. Who cares? But yeah, it was like 90, I, I think like literally it was like 4% that said, yeah, I'd rather that. And I was like, and I remember because I, I posted the results and I was like, well, I'm with the 4%. Yeah. Like I'm literally with the 4%. I would hate to be in the hotel room. I think those 96% haven't done the, had to do the two weeks quarantine in a hotel where they couldn't open up a window or they had no, you know, yard yard time where they were allowed to go into like a little walking area. Like it, I think once they've experienced that, I think they'll appreciate being able to be at their own home. You know? I mean, not that you're the type, but I wonder what 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 smokers would be feeling like oh. if they can't open the room. I mean, do they have smoking rooms? I don't even know. Like, you couldn't smoke in the hotel because obviously the, the the smoke alarm would go off. So I don't know how how they would cope with with two weeks of not being able to smoke. That's crazy. That is crazy, yeah. right? Or do they have like a little balcony that they can go? But I guess not because you have to stay in your room. You have to stay in the room, and plus those the rooms that I was in, there was no like you couldn't slide open the door, or, you know. Slide open or close the door, the window. Sorry, so yeah, that would that would definitely suck for a lot of people that well did smoke. Gnarly. Um. All right. This week you watched the fights. Yes. Kind of crazy, huh? Yep. What are, What are your thoughts? I'm obviously talking about uh the great Anderson Silva. Um. What did you think of his final fight? Um. Do you think it is time for him to to hang him up? Um. um. Yeah, what I, I'm a bit of mixed. I'm a bit mixed. Like, uh, obviously, I grew up watching, you know, watching him fight and, and destroy so many people in, in such spectacular fashion. And then just to see him go out like that, like, he was, he, he looked good. I think he was winning the two rounds. Uh, he won, yeah, the first and second, and then obviously got caught in that third round. Then obviously in the fourth, got finished in the fourth. But um, I think he was looking good for a guy that's 46 years old. He looked good against a guy that was, you know, I think you're right, you. Uriah Hall's top 10 or top 15, and he looked good against him. But also, um, again, one of those, you know, you know, mixed, a bit mixed with it. Um, he doesn't have anything to prove. I don't think he has anything to prove. I think he's sort of just fighting because that's all he knows. And, uh, yeah, it's sort of tough seeing guys like that that you've obviously looked up to and, and watched and seen how great they actually are. And then for them to be just like a shadow of what they are now, it's kind of tough seeing that stuff. See, and, and I totally agree with that. Like, And for me, I, I think he should have hung it up a couple of years ago already, right? Like yep. he was – because look, let, let, let's – granted, he hasn't had an easy fight. Even like now, like, you know, DC, even Biz being like yep. – they, they, they've all been top caliber guys. Yep. But I'm the same, like where I'm like, you know, you have all these memories of him just – as I said, he was the GOAT. Yeah, he was, for sure. And I don't think he's in that conversation now. Obviously, because you've got people like Izzy and, and, and John Jones and now Khabib. Yeah. And, but I also feel like the last few years of his career because, you know, and he talking about Izzy, he fought Izzy and he lost that one. I mean, it was an entertaining fight. But I just kind of feel like that aura just 
slowly but surely disappeared. And as you said, like, you know, he put on a good showing for a 46-year-old. Mm. And I hate the fact that you have to back it up with for 46 a 46-year-old. Right? Yeah. Like, and that's the only thing I had with it was like, dude, I, I was saying already like three years ago, it's like the guy has nothing to prove. Like, and I kind of respect the fact that he is still fighting at the highest caliber. But like, I was like, dude, I... I, I Chuck Liddell's another one for me, right? Like it was just like the Ice Man, yeah, you know, and and, sure. and then he just turned into this guy who was getting knocked out, and then the last comeback fight was terrible, yeah. you know, and 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 you kind of go, why? Like just give it up. I, yeah, I feel like it. it it's um maybe it, it's just one of those things. I think that they, they they literally that's all they've known, and that's all they've you know that's all they've done their whole life, and for them to like lose that um that it's like they're what they identify themselves as, you know. All I've known myself as is just, just Anderson Silva, the fighter, maybe not Anderson Silva, the family man, or Anderson Silva doing something else. You know, it's always been Anderson Silva, the the spider. You know, the no, and I and I get it, but then like have seminars, be that coach, be be that guy. Like you know, we have like the goat coming in to to take seminars where you're still kind of that fighter and you have that aura rather than go out the way you're going out, you know? Like, I just... Yeah, it's, it's so... It's tough to watch. Like, it really is. And 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 the thing that, I guess, has got me worried is where they keep pressing him right now, like, whether he's going to fight again. And, like, you know, he keeps saying, this is my last UFC fight, and then they're like, so this is your last fight, and then he's like, meh, maybe. Yeah, but... Yeah. So the way I'm reading that is, and I think he's said it in the past, is... And, you know, they've questioned Dana about it now. Is like, are you, because he's got one fight left on the contract, yeah. are you going to re- release him? And yeah. and I think Dana's kind of like, well, he's a grown man. He can do what he wants. But, like, I think this is the problem is, like, yes, he'll probably never fight in the UFC cage again. But if they release him... He's going to fight somewhere else. He's going to fight somewhere else. And I just don't see it ending well for him. I really don't. And, and, and it's... That that's probably the toughest thing for me because you you know you posted about it, Jamie Malarkey posted about it. Like I think all of us have this this great vision of him, <coughs> and then to, as I say, like I mean, yes, I'm going to tune in. I'm, it's the same thing like Mike Tyson now fighting uh, uh, Roy, Roy Jones, Jones yeah. right? Like I'm going to tune in, but do I really need to see it? I yeah. don't think I do, right? Yeah. And it's it's a tough one, man. Like it, it really is. I, I, I think it's uh, one of those things that they, they have to, uh, they have to really sit down and have a chat with all the people that it's close around them, and you know, finally, like I feel like it, they got to have that intervention with them to say, like, look, this is it, no more. You, you can't keep doing this, not only to yourself but also to your loved ones. You know, your loved ones are the ones going to be seeing you all banged up and you know, emotionally banged up as well. So they, they sort of don't want you to go through that again. So it's something I think when the time comes, I think for me as well, is going to be being able to sit down and look at myself and be like, okay, that's it. You know, I don't want to think of it now because I'm obviously, I'm still young and I still have a lot, a lot left in my career. But I, I think at one stage it's going to be, there's going to be that time where I'm going to have to sit down and say like, this is it. I, I, I think the question you need to ask yourself is like, am I chasing a title? Right. And it doesn't matter if you're at the bottom of the food chain or close to it. It's like, am I chasing that? Now, if you're just hovering around knowing that you'll never get to that title status again, that's where I kind of feel like, well, what's the point? Like if you're just hovering, like it's 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 kind of like you need to have that goal and that drive. And if you can honestly say to yourself like, look, I can be competitive, but I'm never going to reach that status. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people do that as well. But um, I think a, a, lot of, a lot of fighters all have different um, goals that they set out to be. And I, I think there's a, there's a lot of fighters that know that they're never going to, that they're going to get to the, to the title. They only just, you know, they like, they like fighting that competing, but they do do it more so for the, the money. That's all they've known. They do it for the money. So um, yeah, not, not, not so much chasing the, the best of the best and trying to get to the title, but more so just, yeah, I'm earning a good living through, through fighting. So I'm just going to stick to fighting. So, yeah, I, I don't know if it's the greatest living. I mean, one, once again, if you're in the title picture, you're making good dollars. Yeah, sure. Right? But, I mean, you know, you take your three three fights, right, a, a year. 
at say the lower end of 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 the contract negotiations. Yeah. Right. You can make more being the electrician. Surely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So like to say you're doing it for the money. It, it, yeah. There's. Yes, if if you make it to the title picture, hundred percent, yeah, right, you, yeah. you've got that money. But I just don't feel like the money's that great to be able to go. Yeah, I'll hover around the bottom just to make money. Like I, mm. I just, and also then you've got a, the health, the injuries, the yeah. it, it. It's a tough way to make a living, dude. Yeah, like uh, you sure. know, like I I honestly look at you guys and I'm just like, wow, you know, like because I know, you know, the work that goes behind it when the lights aren't there. Yeah. Right, and I know that grind, and and so I respect it from that level. That like you know, I've said in the past, I I don't think fighters earn enough. Right, I think it's unjustified that people always point and go, you know, they make this much gate da, 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 when obviously the event itself costs a lot more than just paying fighters. Yeah, like there's a lot more to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I I do really respect that grind. One person that. Finished on top though, Kabib. What are your thoughts about that one? Do you, do you, do you a think he's done the right thing? Um, do you think there was any fights left for him? Um, and two, Dana's obviously come out now, going, eh, he might come back. Um, yeah, what, what what's your opinion there? I, I think um, it, it's always dependent on the fighter. I think if he says that he it, that's it for him, and he he sort of doesn't want to fight anymore without his dad, and that's it, and he can call it quits like that, then. You know, all props to him. He's he's still got his you know his health in check. You know, he's still young. He can still go and chase other things he wants to do, and he's made it to the pinnacle of the sport. You know, so all, all props. And to he him. and he has made money. Oh, so he yeah, has made sure. money. He has made a ton of money. So there's uh yeah. He, if he left on top with money, you know, he's left on top with his uh his health. You know, and his legacy. He's he's, he's basically has all everything that uh, everything to lose now if he if he continues to go. But um. I don't know. It's it, it's dependent on again on on him if he wants to chase that one more, you know, that thirty, you know, you know, he must have like no OCD or anything because twenty nine looks a little bit funny. Well, and and that's what I was thinking. And I think already like before his father passed away, they said they were going to get to thirty, you know, and then retire. I think that was kind of the 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 aim, right? It was to get to thirty and retire, and that's why he always said, oh, "I've only got like two fights left in me" or whatever. So he kind of made that clear. Um, the only reason he stopped now is he was saying that he made the promise to his mother. Yeah. Dana's come out and said, yeah, but with the father, he kind of went, we're going to go 30. 30 so yeah. it's kind of like, you know, is he going to keep his word to his father or to his mother now? That is kind of where it's at. Um, and look, originally I was like, damn, like I wanted him to get that 30 as well. I don't know if it's OCD, as you say. Like I was like, come on, bro, just one more fight. Yeah. Like. And then I like looked at it and I'm like, he's kind of cleared out that division. But I'll tell you one fight that I still would like to see. GSP? Um, y- yeah, no, GSP. Tony? I, I still want to see the Tony fight. <laughs> and I know that Justin beat Tony. But as they always say, MMA S- math don't work out. Just because, yeah. Right? Just because Justin was able to beat him and he beat Justin, it doesn't necessarily... I still and I and I guess it's also because we've been promised that fight six Seven, times, yeah. right? Like, but I I I would actually like to see him come back and and my my one would be Tony over um, GSP, yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. Well, either either one of those are either one of those are definitely you know something you can you you wanna you wanna watch either one. But um, how how can you say to Tony, oh? Tony's coming off a loss. Yeah, all right. You get the next shot at Khabib. It's sort of does Tony have to work his way back up to get to that shot again, or does his credentials of having how many long of a fight streak win, you know, get him? Well, get and him. and also just to say, it means that Khabib has cleaned out the division, mm. right? I mean, Jose Aldo got a title fight off a loss. Yeah, so it can happen, you know. Um, and yeah, before that, it was 13 fight win streak, right? Yep. So, as I say, Justin, and look, it wasn't close. Justin beat him fair and square. Yep. But stylistically, I, I still think that would be a really cool fight. Exciting. Because you don't know what Tony, what Tony's going to do. Well, I just always find like um, Khabib puts everyone on their back. Yeah. Tony likes to be on his back. Yeah, he's happy. He's happy to do Right. Yeah. So, I kind of stylistically, I'm like, yeah, it, it's kind of like Khabib's strength also plays into Tony's strength. Yeah. Like, see, Justin wasn't putting you on the back. Yeah. Justin was standing there and banging, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
that's that. I mean, Tony does get hit a lot. Yeah. Right. So I just, I don't know. The fan in me would love to see that fight, um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, future fights, though. What do you think of um, Izzy's next fight? So Whitaker has said that he doesn't want to fight Izzy, and Dana's now confirmed that he's going to move up to light heavyweight to fight Yarn. And um, props to Izzy. Yeah, he's he's doing everything so quick. You know, he's 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 done so much in such a short amount of uh, short amount of time. It's it's crazy what he's doing. Um, but I think I think he gets it done. If anybody can do it, I think he gets it done. I think Yarn Yarn's going to be too slow. Too stiff, <laughs> and just yeah, he's just. I think he's just going to be outclassed. Like um, Izzy's already dealt with all those same same style of fighters that are just going to go in there and try to try to outmuscle him and try to you know land that one big shot, and he's just never there to be hit. So I think Izzy gets it done. But for someone like yourself who has moved up a weight class and just knowing obviously the extra power and stuff that comes with moving up a weight class, you don't think that'll be a problem at all. Um, well, Izzy has, has always jumped from, he's, he's fought up, at, I think at even heavyweight at kickboxing. So he's, he's done it before, you know, he's, he's, he's tasted, he's tasted the, the heavyweight, uh, power and strength before. So I don't think it's not going to be a big surprise to him. And plus he has sort of have a, has a frame for, for, for a bigger guy. So he, he has a frame to, to, to build up to that, to that size. So I don't think it's going to be much of a difference. And I think just technically, He's he's got it all over <laughs> all those light heavyweights. So, and and do you think that'll be the, uh, uh, a one move up and come back down? Like, do you think he'll vacate the 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 middleweight title, or do you think this is going to be his move to like I guess get a little bit closer to the John Jones fight? I uh, man, I honestly don't know. With him, he he's he's probably going to go. Who knows? He might just go straight light heavyweight, and after he wins that light heavyweight, he might. Go go up and challenge Stepe or whoever has the heavyweight title. Who knows? Like he's Easy's doing some crazy things. Uh, who knows what what he's gonna be? What he's what he's going to do next? Conor McGregor, Dustin, number two in Jan. How do you see that one go? Plays out like the first fight. I think Dustin hasn't changed too much, and neither has Conor. And like you said before, uh, styles styles are very similar. Styles. You know, styles make make fights, and um, I don't think anything's going to change unless you know some freak accident happens during the fight. But I don't think I don't think anything else is going to change. I think you know he's going to get stopped. Uh, Dustin's going to get caught, and that's it. And Connor's left hand, everyone everyone knows he has that power to to, to put people away with one shot. I mean, the only the only thing that I will say could potentially change is the weight, mm. right? Because obviously Dustin, when he fought, say, Holloway, I mean, he just, you know, compared to when he was at featherweight, was just... But you, you have to remember, Connor was never really a featherweight either. He was killing himself to make featherweight. And the same was Dustin. He was killing himself to make featherweight. And now they're both... He's going to be at 155 or 170. Well, are they going to be fighting at 150? I think originally they were saying 170, but I think now if Khabib... Loses the title, which Dana said he's not stripping the title yet. So I, I really don't know what way they're fighting at. Yeah. I mean, it could potentially be for the 155 uh, title yeah. if that's if Khabib does finalise his retirement. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it could be up f- uh, for 170. But no, I mean, I also say, look, and I think Uriah this weekend, I think um, been inactive as well a lot, right? Like, mm. And, and um, with Uriah, obviously, it wasn't his fault. He's had a lot of fights fall out. Yep. Yeah injury this that whatever but i think that also showed a little bit um just as you said the first one two rounds were kind of slow and you know you're kind of like yeah, yeah and you're kind of yeah. like ah, what's going on and i kind of feel like you know with with mcgregor we don't know what he's been up to i mean i'm i'm sure he's not sitting on the couch slouching or anything yep. like that but like we just don't know where dustin has remained a little active, active yeah. right so that's the only thing that I uh, kind of feel like how how much you know proper whiskey is kind of drinking like you know like you, you you just don't know and then when you look at like Khabib versus Dustin and Khabib versus and once again MMA math don't work so you can't go well you know he did well and he didn't but I just I kind of think it'll be a little more competitive than than the first one I, uh, I think it will but I I, th- I still th- see it um, kind of landing that that one shot that's going to rattle Dustin and 
and Connor's a finish finisher. So it just takes one with Connor and, and yeah, Connor's just one of those guys that has that, that death touch that uh, for us, Ahabi always talks about. He literally has to just land one shot and it's game over for you. Uh, Megan Anderson, Amanda Nunes. Oh, obviously <laughs> I, I'm, I'm obviously backing uh, Megan Anderson, you know, the Australian, but uh, it's a, it's a tough fight. You know, the woman, the woman goat, you know, the, the best, the best female fighter ever, you know, she beat everybody, the who's who in, you know, in the women's MMA. So um, it's a tough fight, but I, I have to, I have to back the Aussie no matter what. Nice. Aljamain Sterling, Versus Peter Yarn. Um, I think Peter Yarn takes it. I think he's uh, if he doesn't get too flustered with all the the funky style that um that Aljamain does, I think he just keeps putting the pressure on like he did with Aldo, and uh, he he'll probably finish him in the in the later rounds. But um, I'm very excited for the whole bantamweight division. Like it's a exciting time for them. And then in the heavyweights, Francis versus Stipe. Um. I think Stipe still gets it done. I still think he avoids that knockout power, grinds him down and does what he did in that first fight um, and just, you know, takes him down, beats him up, and then when they stand back up, there's no juice left in uh, Francis, so he can't he can't land that big shot because he's too 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 worn out. Um, and, yeah, I think Stipe just ends up touching him on the feet and then, again, just taking him down, back up, touch him on the feet, take him back down. It's I think it's going to be the same way that that happened in the in their first fight. See where I I will say that I'm going Francis on this one. I think because from what I've heard is that he's been fixing his holes, mm. and and I mean his one hole was I guess the wrestling. And when you talk to some of the guys, apparently he's a beast on the mats now. Mm. Um, obviously with that strength and stuff, I d- I don't know, but uh, I don't know. I I, I think Francis is going to can can he do it for five rounds? Yeah, you, you're good at stuffing takedowns for the first round. That's cool. Okay, maybe the second round. That's cool too. But then three, four, five. That's how, how's your gas tank after trying to stuff all those takedowns? Yeah. And then not only that, trying to still have that knockout punch too, that knockout power to be able to stand up and swing and still be able to go after being taken down and, you know, having to carry somebody else's weight on top of you. It's but can you also dodge that power for five rounds too on Stipe's? Like, you know, like I'm sure he can, but like, you know, it just takes the one shot to change that's, that whole landscape, that's, that's, especially at heavyweight too. Like forget Francis power. Just the any, whole heavyweight. Heavyweight, it right? It takes one punch for any of them to put anybody Right, like you always see like flyweights and stuff, they're hitting each other, they're, they're fast, they're quick and yeah. stuff. And then you see the heavyweights and it's just like one punch. Yeah. It is. Speaking of heavyweights, I, I just because it came to mind, Mark Hunt versus Paul Gallen. Ooh. Yeah, I think. How, how do you see that fight? Do you, do you, do you think it'll be competitive? Um, like to me, I just think it's insanity. Like I wouldn't like me. I just wouldn't even commission it. Like, uh, and I get that Paul Gallen has had like some success in boxing, but he's fighting other footy players. Yeah, like I, 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 I and I know people are going, yeah, but Mark Hunt's getting older. But like, it's like, it's the, that one punch. And like, the, it's it's. I think it's just the experience. I think Mark Hunt is just. Too experienced. I think he's going to find his chin. He's going to be able to hit him in spots where Paul doesn't see it coming. I think he's, Paul's just going to be... He's just going to be there to be hit. And you obviously don't want to be hit by Mark Hunt. Um, all it takes is one. Heavyweights. Um, right. And, and and on top of that, like I, I say, because people are like, yeah, but it's not mixed martial arts. And I'm like, all right, let's be serious. How many times have you seen Mark Hunt take someone down? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like even to the point, how many, t- how many kicks have you seen Mark Hunt yeah. really throw? Like, yeah. I mean... Very rare. Very right. Rare. Like I kind of go like, yeah, he was in, he had success in mixed martial arts kind of as a boxer. Yeah. Right. Cause that's all he was doing. He, he was bombing people with, with his, with his, Fist. with his, <laughs> with his it. fist. That's, that's it. it. And I honestly see this the same way. I, I think it'll be a walk off. I honestly do. Yeah. I, I, I don't see do it you, any other way. Do you know how many rounds this is? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, must, it has to be like at least eight. Yeah. I, I think eight. And I mean, both of them have said it's not going to go the distance and, well, if Paul comes forward, like he, like if he thinks that Mark, the, the only way I see Paul winning is is him just being able to take the shots, keep his chin tucked, take him on the gloves, 
and just walk down Mark until Mark gets tired. That's the only way I see it going down. If well, and, that, and that's what Paul said. He said, my fitness is going to win the fight. And he, he's already come out and said, I'm not going to be able to finish him because I know Mark also knows how to take a punch, right? His chin's big and, and stuff like that. So Paul's kind of prediction is he's going to win on points. Yeah. I just don't think he's – as you were saying about the Stipe thing, like can you do it for five rounds? Can Paul do it for eight rounds? I just don't know. And 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 in a boxing ring as well, it's a lot easier to cut people off, right, yeah. and trap them in that corner yeah. compared to, to an octagon. So I just think I, – when I look at it, I just shake my head. Like honestly, I don't know how they're commissioning this fight. Well, that's the beauty about the fight game is that, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how – how unmatched people think it is, people are going to watch because they want to see how it plays out. It doesn't matter what, how it goes down, they want to see how it plays out. This is true. This is true. But look, on that note, we're going to finish it up. Awesome. Uh, it's been great to finally have you in. Um, I'm sure we'll get you in again once we've got some more fight news yep. or, or, you know, once once we actually notch that, uh, the, the, the dub. Yep. <laughs> um, but no, look, I, I really do appreciate you coming in. Um, for people that want to reach out to you, um, or even like, can people come train with you guys out at Igor, or what's the deal there? Or yeah, so for people that want to either train or you know get some advice, or you know some young guns coming up in the yeah. scene, uh, what what's the best way of them actually getting in touch with you? Um, for sure, just literally rock up to the gym, uh, thirty two Ebley Street, Bondi Junction, Igor MMA. Just um, yeah, just rock up. Come, come in, you know, willing to train with me. I'm going to be there every night. So there's no difference for, difference for me. So if you guys want to just come in and train, it's cool too. Well, there you have it. Um, uh, as I said, I do really appreciate the time. Um, yeah, if you do go to the gym, I hear that he is a big fan of Drake. Actually, I have some video of him dancing to Drake. Um, but yeah, look, I, I really do appreciate it. As I said, I had you win that last fight. Um, and, and I'm not just saying that cause you're, you're here. I honestly thought that you had done enough to get the, the, the nod. Um, but it just means that you're going to come back stronger in the next one and we look forward to it. But until then, that is it. <laughs> <laughs>